Always refer to the instructions for use packaged with the product for complete instructions, indications, contraindications, warnings, and precautions. With the patient in the supine position, digitally reduce any external hemorrhoids to facilitate insertion of the anal dilator. Lubricate the dilator and insert into the anal canal and remove. Lubricate the complete anoscope kit, dilator, anoscope, and port nested together and insert into the anal canal. Remove the dilator and anoscope, leaving the port in the anus. Secure the port to the buttocks with stay sutures. Thread the loose end of the purse string suture through the open end of the anoscope under the transparent bridge and back over the outside of the bridge towards the opening. Attach a clamp to the loose end of the suture and later place the loose end of the purse string behind one of the anoscope handles and out of the way. Insert the dilator into the anoscope with the pre-threaded suture. Reinsert the nested dilator and anoscope and remove the dilator. The dilated anal canal and transparent anoscope enables the dentate line and underlying anatomy to be visualized. The anoscope with the EEA hemorrhoid stapler kit has uniformly placed circumferential graduations that help to guide even purse string placement. Using the anoscope graduations to maintain a consistent circumferential placement, create a purse string suture in the mucosa and submucosa. The purse string should be positioned to capture the desired amount of prolapse and position the final staple line to be appropriately proximal to the dentate line. The appropriate location of the purse string may vary within the range of the markings on the anoscope depending on degree of prolapsed mucosa and the desired amount of tissue to be removed. After the purse string is completed, remove the needle from the suture. Digitally or visually assess the amount of tissue to be resected and select an appropriate anchor hole on the center rod. Insert the detachable anvil into the rectum so that the anvil is positioned proximal to the purse string suture. Cinch the purse string suture around the center rod and pass one end of the suture through the appropriate anchor hole in the center rod. Pass the other end of the suture through the same hole but in the opposite direction. Secure the tissue to the center rod with appropriate purse string tension and knotting. Visually or digitally inspect the tissues captured by the purse string to ensure that only desired tissues have been incorporated and that there are no gaps in the purse string. On female patients, digitally inspect the rectovaginal wall while moving the anvil assembly slightly in and out to ensure that the rectovaginal tissues have not been incorporated into the purse string. Remove and reapply the purse string upon discovering any gaps that would result in an incomplete anastomosis or if unwanted tissues have been incorporated. Cut and remove the purse string ends. To mate the anvil assembly with the instrument, fully extend the center shaft of the stapler by twisting the adjustment knob counterclockwise until it stops. Hold the center rod in one hand and mate the center rod to the stapler by inserting the blunt center rod into the female shaft receptacle. Push firmly until the center rod clicks into its fully seated position. Visually inspect the attachment to ensure that the center rod and stapler are fully mated. Close the device by holding the device perpendicular to the opening of the anus and turn the twist knob in the clockwise direction. Allow the device to close with neutral tension. Continue to twist the knob clockwise until the ready-to-fire indicator displays a green line. Caution! Any unusual effort required to turn the twist knob in order to visualize at least a portion of the green bar in the indicator window may indicate excessive tissue, uneven tissue capture, or, if using the 3.5 mm stapler, the need to use a larger staple size. The safety will not release if the green ready-to-fire indicator is not visible. To ensure that the green bar remains visible in the ready-to-fire indicator window, do not turn the twist knob once the safety is released. Again, for female patients, digitally inspect the tissues captured transvaginally to ensure that rectovaginal tissues have not been captured in the device. To fire the instrument, release the safety latch underneath the handle and squeeze the handle firmly until the handle contacts the safety latch. 
an audible and tactile click will indicate full firing of the stapler. Release the handle after firing and return the safety to the locked position. Remove the instrument by turning the adjustment knob one turn counterclockwise and gently extract from the patient. Do not turn the twist knob more than one turn after firing. Doing so may result in difficulty in removing the device or separation of the anvil assembly from the device. Following removal, inspect the staple line for hemostasis and correct any residual bleeding with a suture. To inspect the tissue sample or donut, turn the twist knob counterclockwise to fully open the instrument and inspect the tissue specimen to ensure that all desired tissue layers have been incorporated in the anastomosis. Remove any stay sutures and remove the port from the rectum. Dispose of the device and all sharps as per your institution's policies.